In a recent video I made, Anko asked me whether it was possible to use third-party plugins live with the CQ18 mixer. Initially, I thought it was impossible, or at least very tricky to use the external plugins. But while writing a reply, an idea came to my mind. So with motivation from this comment, I set out to prove myself wrong and figure out a way to use third-party plugins live. For a long time, I've wanted to use plugins like Autotune for vocals, Saturation, and Amp Simulators live. I knew it was possible with specialist equipment, but I didn't want to invest loads of money into it to try and figure it out. In a recent video I made, I explored how the CQ18 team mixer can be used in a hybrid state, where you can have live instruments and logic tracks playing at the same time. This, however, was only applicable to recording and backing tracks. To use third-party plugins live, there are three main problems. Routing, delay, and output. Routing. For this to work, we need to set the source point of the mixer to be at the preamp. To do this, we can go into the config page, then in the USB page, and setting the source point to post preamp. In a perfect world, we would want the input one of the mixer mapped to input one on logic, then being processed in the instance sections with any plugins, and finally sent back out into input one. This would mean that input one has to output the signal and then receive it too. In theory, this makes sense and keeps everything in one place. But due to the routing limitations of the mixer, individual inputs cannot be in a hybrid state, which is to say that an input can either be analog or USB. It cannot be both at the same time. Although this may seem like a letdown, and it was, I wasn't going to give up this easily. Luckily, we have 16 inputs, so we can try a different way of routing the signal. Instead of making input one do all the work, we can split the input and output stages between two channels. The layout of the mixer makes this very intuitive. Channel one would be analog, and through USB, pass the live signal to logic. This gives us control over the gain, low cut, and phase parameters. Once in logic, we can apply processing to this as if it was an audio channel. In this case, it's an electric guitar that I'm playing, and we can put a preamp simulator as an effect. Once we're happy with the processing, we need to send the channel audio back into the mixer. In logic, this can be done by changing the output of the channel from stereo out to one of the channels on the mixer, and then changing the input to USB. I've chosen to send the guitar into input 9 as it corresponds well with the mixer layout, where you can choose any input. By splitting the input and output stages, we can understand the signal flow in an analog kind of way. This creates a logical signal flow because we are not creating a feedback loop where input 1 receives and sends a signal at the same time. This is helped by the mixer being in a hybrid state, allowing the signal to be routed like this more easily. This means that we'll need one extra channel for every track that we want to process in logic. For example, if you want to process 4 tracks, we'll need 8 inputs, 4 to send to logic, and 4 coming back. And for 8 tracks to be processed, we'll need 16. 8 is the number of individual channels we can process in logic with this mixer, as the CQ18T only has 16 mono XLR inputs. Delay. Now that we have a way for the mixer and logic to talk to each other, we'll need to deal with delay. There are two stages to this. Stage 1 is between the mixer and logic input, as logic needs time to process the mixer's input and send it back to the mixer. Stage 2 is within the plugins we use, as each plugin uses processing power and introduces a slight delay. Both these stages can be optimized by lowering the buffer length the time it takes for logic to process audio. You may have encountered this while mixing or recording where it feels like there's a delay between you pressing the play button and hearing the track playback. It's a small delay, but in live sound, it's huge. By lowering the buffer size, we're forcing logic and our computer to work harder and process the audio with the least amount of delay. The more powerful your computer, the lower you can make your buffer size without any audio artifacts. Another way to reduce delay is by only using essential processing you need. Low cut, tone shaping EQ, compression, noise gate, reverb, delay, and modulation effects are already built into this mixer. So don't waste processing resources on those channels. We can further reduce the delay by using Logic's stock plugins. Autotune for vocals, overdrive for saturation, and built-in amp and bass designers are fantastic and optimized to work effectively with Logic. Finally, this leads us well into the final problem. Output, or connecting to the PA. In a lot of ways, we've solved this in a routing section of the video. Our routing states that the analog signal comes back into the mixer, allowing us full control over the inbuilt processing and monitoring of the processed audio. We can connect the PA speakers as normal, but we need to ensure that we are not sending the unprocessed signal to the PA. So all our failure changes have to be made within the 9 to 16 input section, and not from input 1 to 8. If I was to use this live, I'd probably use the IR loader from my acoustic guitar as I found the direct pickup to sound harsh and unpleasant to listen to. 
I also want to mention that I've only scratched the surface as to the flexibility and versatility of this mixer. And I'm fascinated by the potential applications for this mixer in a hybrid live situation. If anyone is planning on using this live, please bear in mind that this is not the best or the only way of doing this. I'd recommend trying this in a small venue first, as although it's possible to use third party plugins for this mixer, you need to ensure that your computer can handle the processing workload and the smaller buffer size. I think if anything, it's a cool proof of concept of what this mixer can do and the creative routing avenues you can take with the hybrid input and output mixer section. A huge thank you to Anko for your question and making me think creatively about routing and signal flow. And thank you all for watching this video.